Hey, Kevin, what are you looking at? Well, I got an email the other day, and this gentleman is just starting out in TIG welding, and he said, could you talk a little about the different size tungstens versus the different size filler rods? So go ahead, pick a card. <laughs> what we have here are three different packages of E3, which is the purple top tungsten. We've got the eighth inch, the 332nd, and the 16th of an inch. So just to show you the difference in size. So here's the eighth inch, the 332nd, and the 16th of an inch. So you've got these different size tungstens. What kind of amperages are you going to run on them? You don't want to put, you know, like the eighth inch in there and try to run it at, you know, 20 amps. It's not even going to light. Or, you know, try to run the sixteenth of an inch and try to run 250 amps. You're just going to burn it up. So, amperage ranges for those three different size tungstens. And this is off the American Welding Society, and it's, you know, that's the, uh, pamphlet number it was put out in 12 of 2009 so sixteenth of an inch or 1.6 millimeter 60 to 150 amps is all you're going to want to run the 332nd or 2.4 millimeter 150 to 250 amps and that'll pretty well max out most of your consumer size TIG welders till you get up into the bigger industrial machines the eighth inch or 3.2 millimeter 225 to 230 amps. And as, like I said, this is from American Welding Society, and these are the amperage ratings they recommend for that particular E3 type tungsten. And the second part of that question was, well, okay, what size, you know, what size filler, or what size tungstens do I need? What size filler rods do I need? And how do the two match? You know, how do the two meet up? Here's a sixteenth of an inch uh, E3 tungsten. Been freshly ground. I got my HP Alpha TIG out over here. So let me go ahead and turn it down to say like 60 amps, like we saw on the board over there for the, uh, for the 16th tungsten. I'll try to feed some of that eighth inch to it, just so you see what happens. Okay, so 60 amps, and it's eighth inch tungsten. Good Lord, it's like welding molasses. <laughs> So let's see, yeah, there's one, it takes about, about three seconds to get that tungsten, or get that, get that filler rod to actually melt. So now let me just switch over to a sixteenth of an inch filler rod, and I'll show you how that looks. So we're still at 60 amps, but now that filler rod just vanishes the second it hits the puddle. So this is where I started. Like I said, 60 amps using that eighth inch filler rod and really, really cold, you know, kind of lumpy, didn't want to flatten out. And then as soon as I switched over to the 16th, uh, 16th of an inch filler, all of a sudden it flattened out and now it's looking pretty good right through there. So I hope that answers your question. You know, gives you a few things to think about, you know, the amperage ratings that you saw on the board over there. You know, go back in the video, write those down, just post them on your machine. That way you've got them right there. You know, if you're using this size, run in that range. If you're using that size, go to that range. But, you know, two things to think about. A too big filler rod into too small of an arc lower amperage, too small of an arc over there. It's just like taking a huge, huge chunk of firewood and throwing it in a little tiny campfire. You know, that great big log, it's gonna literally dampen that fire down, or that arc, it's gonna dampen that down, it's gonna cool it off a little bit, now you gotta wait for it to warm back up again. Where if you throw a little tiny log on the fire, It'll just fall right in, it'll burn right in, it'll catch right on fire. The fire's not going to dampen down, and you can just keep right on going. And I'll tell you a little trick. If you think you might be using too big of a filler rod, the way to check, when you go to dab it into the puddle, if it wants to stick, if it doesn't just disappear the second you hit the puddle, you want it, and it wants to stick in that puddle, that means you're running too big of a rod. Go to a smaller rod, and you'll see it'll just, it'll just bite right off the end of the filler rod. You'll just keep right on going. You won't get that 
hesitation like it's trying to stick because it's too cold. So a couple things to think about. Um, I'm going to think about getting back to work and you guys, oh, hey, go back out to my YouTube homepage. On one side there, there's a button that says uh, donate or share or something like that or fund. You know, there, there's a donate button right there. It's over on the right side of the screen. And if you like my videos, why don't you click on that? Send me a buck. Help pay for the videos. You guys do that. I'm going to get back to work and I'll see you next time. And here's just a little graph, uh, graph, well. <laughs>